Hey everybody, it's Matthew of Mr. Domestic where we spread joy and positivity through sewing and fabric play. In this video, I am going to show you how to make a Scandinavian folded star ornament out of fabric. Ta-da! Yay! I have made three different sizes and three different variations and I'll give you the measurements for the different three in the end of the video, but this entire video is going to walk you from beginning to end on how to prepare and make this amazing ornament. So if that's what you're here for, before we get into the content, anytime you're enjoying it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Now let's get ready to have some fun. Okay, so I am on my floor because I'm in the middle of trying to clean my room and I don't want it to get worse. So <laughs> hopefully this is fine for you. But I have two contrasting fabrics because I think this is gonna look really cool. These are from my Love to Pieces collection and the strips are 16 by four. And it's kind of an estimate as to the length of it. I think you're gonna need shorter, but you can trim off the excess. And the first thing that you do with these, and I have slightly terialized them or used a fabric stabilizer and it just to make it a little bit more stiff than normal. I just thought it would look crisper. But so for each of these strips, what we are going to do we're gonna fold it in half like this. And this is just to find the midline. Right here. And then now fold it in half like this. So it's kind of like you're making bias tape kind of. And you wanna get that right on the edge here. Like this. And then one thing with stabilized fabric is that you can finger press it a lot and it'll stay a lot better than traditional fabric. It probably wouldn't stay and it just makes it easier for this step also. And it smells super duper good. If you've never used Tyriel Magic, it just makes my whole room smell super good. I don't know how to describe it. It's like floral, awesome, goodness. I just like the scent. <laughs> so, now, I have it on high-ish and I'm, I ran out of water. I still need to fill it for my last video. <laughs> so there is one. Ta-da! And I will fast forward through the others so you don't have to like watch it in real time, but fast forward is fun. Okay, I just swapped out ironing pads because that other one was like really ugly. So these are pressed and then what you want to do is each one of these you're going to fold and estimate, I don't know, that's like an inch, a little bit more than an inch. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. And then I'm just going to press that and then you'll do this to all of them. If you wanted to make sure that it's like super extra awesome, then put the like the exposed opening on the same side of the fold, just to keep it like symmetrical and stuff and balance and like ooh la la and all that. But if you forget, like, no big deal. So one, two, three, and then four. Okay, so now you have these. And this is how I'm going to lay out mine. They will go this way and then these and then these. But let me show you how they weave in. Essentially, these two parts are going to go inside here. See how I put it like that? And then this is going to go inside here like this. See? And then guess where this one's going? These go inside here, like this. And then this goes inside these two. So you thread it like this. Oh, I can already tell how pretty this is gonna be. Oh my goodness, goodness, goodness. And then you'll tighten it, get it all snug as a bug in a rug. Cause bugs and rugs are snug. <laughs> there are moments when it's clearly obvious I have a five-year-old and that was one of them. So. Tight, looks cute, 
Way to go. And then I'm going to whip out my mini clips. I love these mini ones. They're kind of spendy, but I like them. Just because they're cute. And then they're really strong for how cute they are and how little. I'm just clipping this just to make sure it doesn't move. So we have this, right? Ooh la la. Then I'm going to flip it over, right? And then what you're going to start to do is with the large one, go like this. See how I went? It was like this. Just fold it over. And then you can just go in a circle, folding it over like this. And then this one, this one's going to go inside here. I threaded it. Like that, and then pull it tight again. Now it's tight, 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 tight. And now the folding begins, which is fun. And there is like, I can already tell there's like way too much excess on it, so you won't need that. I'm just, I'm gonna start here. You can start anywhere. I'm gonna start here and then flip it. And then, see what I did there? And I'm gonna do this eight times, folks. So if you didn't see it that time, totally fine. And one thing that I am going to do, because I can already tell there's excess, that I'm gonna snip it there. And then I fold it over here. And then this, the little tail part gets tucked in there. Like so. Boom. And one other thing I'm doing is I'm just pressing each one of the corners. And then since it's fabric and I want this to last forever, this is when I whip out like the big guns. I get my fabric fuse. Doesn't take a lot of glue. Just put it right in there. And then I am going to clip it and just let them dry. And that will just give it a little bit of extra like durability. Because you want these things to last forever and become keepsakes, right? So I trimmed off about an inch and a half. So that's going to go off of all of them. And so it's already on the right side to get started. It's going to level set it every time you flip it. So you don't have to worry about it. Like which one goes what way. See how it's, I flipped it. That is a triangle. See it? And then here, I'm just going slightly above this line when I trim it. Like this. See? Then I fold it over like this and then tuck that inside there. Like that. And you can press it with your iron. Get out your fabric views. Is it working? I feel like it's not working. Ooh, there it is. <laughs> like, where's that glue? Like, this stuff is super strong. It doesn't take much. So I glued it inside and then inside here just to make sure that it's good. And then I keep going. Right here. And the fold goes to the outside, as you can see. See? Oh, like this. And just that little bit of Tyrael magic that I used is making it so much easier, easier to finger press. And see where this line is? I'm just going right. I'm gonna cut anything I'm not supposed to. There you go. Like this, see? Fold it over like that. And then stick it in there. Like that. And once again, just pressing, pressing those edges, making sure they're super crisp, as crisp as possible. Get that fabric fuse. Do a little bit in there, a little bit in there. One clip here. And I'll do one more in real time so that you can see it. So which way do you think I would fold? This way or this way? Fold in this way. Like this. See? And then I flip it over. Go like this. Trim off the excess. I find it easier and just cleaner to trim off the excess before I tuck it than after. 
So that's just something that I did. Fold that over and then stick the excess underneath. Look at that. This ornament is so pretty. Dun, 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 dun. Like that. Just get a bit of fabric fuse under here. Okay, and then four more times, but I am going to fast forward it. And once I get all the way around, I'm gonna let it dry per the instructions on the, the fabric views and then come back. So fast forward. For the final step in this, Thank you, thank you, thank you, Bets Why I was trying to figure out how to like, like rig some origami kind of like ribbon in here to make it cute and I couldn't get past it. And luckily Bets Why reached out to me. She had done this before and she uses embroidery floss. So I'm gonna link to her tutorial, to the step out tutorial. I'll link to it in the description here. But this is how I have decided to use this. I also got some suggestions of using fishing line or a monofilament so you can't see the thread. There are lots of ways to do it and they'll all be attached the same way. So I cut about, I don't know, that's like eight inches of embroidery floss. It's Aurifil embroidery floss. And I'm going to thread this similar to how I thread all of my needles. Here's my needle. Hopefully y'all can see this. And I pinch it and then I have this go through. So the loop goes through, see that? And then what I'm going to do is pull it to where the tails are shorter than the rest of it. And then in the star, there's like a center piece. Like I want it to be hidden. So there's the outside, the inside, and then like a little center thing. I'm hooking it into the center thing so that it's not like super visible where it's coming from. And then here is where I had an issue because <laughs> it didn't want to go through. So if you have pliers or I'm using my quilting glove, it's a so easy quilting glove because it has like rubber on the end and I can grip it better. And this will allow me to, with some pulling, get it through. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, there we go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just let go of the needle. I don't need the needle anymore. And there is the loop. I just like to do all of my ornaments this way if I can to where it's looped because then it will force the ornament to be straight. So in case y'all missed it, let me show okay, you. So that here again. is the loop, right? And if this is your first time. So the loop is on one side and the raw ends are on another and I'm gonna grab the raw ends and pull it through, and this will force it to lay flat. And then I just go up maybe like three inches, estimate it. Like really honestly, I do this depending on like <laughs> where I want it to fit on the tree or how I want it to hang as to how long it's gonna be. So there's not a standard like length. And then like, I don't know, four millimeters above the knot, then just snip it. And then we are Good to go, yeah. And then I definitely wanted you to see the different variations that I did. I did three, diff three different sizes. This was using a three inch width strip. This was a three and a half width strip. This was a four inch width strip that I folded over. You can see the size differences. And then I did one with all the same fabric so you can see it. And I did two with, one with contrasting, one with a solid and a print. And then I did one with four. Honestly, these are my favorite, but it gives you a variety of ornaments that you can do depending on the fabric that you had. So yay for these. So yay. Now you got yourself some Scandinavian star ornaments on your ears if you want to wear them or you can put them on a tree or like these are bomb enough like with my aura and love to pieces fabrics. So I'm gonna keep them up all year long. So if you enjoyed this video, got a laugh or a tip or two, then make sure to give it the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Keep it positive, y'all. Mr. Domestic out. <laughs>